Hi, I'm Jerry O'Donnell with Four Angels Messages, a monthly publication, uh, both in print and in email format. If you'd like to sign up, please visit our website at fourangelsministries.com. We have an interesting battle that's going on right now. It's actually considered one of the last great conflicts. And I'm not so sure if everyone's aware of it. Those that are considered the very elect of God probably are. But I'm hoping that more light could be shed on the subject. But before we begin, we dare not do so without the invitation of the Holy Spirit. So let's take a moment in prayer. <clears throat> Our Father, thank you so very much for this time to spend in thy word and uh, an inspiration from thee, from searching the scriptures, from comparing scripture even with what is happening in the world today. And I pray that we would be aware of the battles that are going on and be able to stand victorious by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I pray that we would have that insight now, convicting us of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> the last great conflict, is that the mark of the beast? No. How about the beast itself? No. How about the image of the beast? No. Well, seven last plagues aren't supposed to affect the uh, saints at all, so that can't be the battle. Even though there's hail involved and earthquakes, and that's not it either. The last great conflict is happening as we speak. And many distractions are happening so that we don't see it. There are different things happening in the world today that are drawing our attention. A lot of people will consider these conspiracy theories. They're not. They have their legitimate place. I mean, we're talking <clears throat> things like chemtrails, uh, forcing everybody to a currency, uh, one world religion, uh, you name it. Um, the fact that uh, all the governments of the world are starting to work in unison to, for some uh, specific purpose, uh, even possibly the depopulation of, of the planet. Whatever theories that you can think of and as they uh, one person said that um, on a, a scale of 1 to 10 and 10 being really off the wall theories and uh, 1 being uh, um, pretty much on target that scale used to be up at 9 or 10 today we're down at 2 or 3 a lot of those what we thought were theories, conspiracy theories at that, are really coming to light. I mean, even throw aliens in there for, for that. Uh, and by the way, I hope you're not caught up in the false aliens, as in you really think that there's visitors from other planets. It, basically, they're demons, okay? Um, but that's not the subject. We need to stay focused on the greatest battle of all time that's already taken place and quite a few people are not aware of it. What such battle could that be? I mean, we named the big ones. Well, let's get a hint from Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. It reads, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The beginning of that verse 
as a person thinks, so is that person. The greatest battle that's going on is in the mind. Control of the mind. Will we stay in self-control, which is one of the uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit, you know, temperance in all things? Or is Satan going to control the mind? We know from the attractions of the mind that we're living in the last days. There has been nothing more on this planet to draw one's mind as there is today. Yes, back a hundred years ago, there was something called the theater, but not everyone could afford to go to the theater. That was more for the elite, um, <clears throat> special invitation, special circumstances. Today, we can even pipe those movies right into our home. All of which, and there's an interesting commercial that um, <clears throat> features um, some type of make-believe class trying to pe- uh, bring people from uh, not uh, growing up not to be like their uh, their parents or something like that. And one of the things that's brought out in this fake class is that uh, when you watch TV, we got to stop calling it programming. I forget what <clears throat> what term. I think it's just the word show or something like that. No, it's programming. It's programming the mind to respond under a certain situation that's yet future. Many of these battle type movies are always about some type of invasion coming to this planet Earth. And they have people around this world thinking more uh, about that type of invasion. If it's not that, how about this, what used to be something in the thing, you would go out into some type of dark alley to try and get a hold of um, what they refer to as adult movies. Uh, Now you can just order it uh, with your cable company. Um, internet's full of it. The whole notion to um, impress upon people that you're not a good holiday person if you don't buy a ton of gifts or cards and stuff other like that, wasting God's precious money, again, A lot of these things didn't exist before the 1900s. And yet they do today in strong guilt. Look at what's happening to people's minds um, related to uh, trying to be careful, uh, you know, avoid censorship, but... uh, getting poked, if you would. It's not enough for supposedly 80, 90% of this country being already poked. We got to go after the other 10% or lose your job. And over 50% of this country is all for it. There's some serious brainwashing going on there. If you think it's okay to have people who have families to lose their job because of an agenda over a potential 0.04 or less percent of dying is it's ridiculous we're not under this worldwide crisis as they refer to it as But the agenda is so strong that people continue to believe it 
and and give power to it. And those that are tr- trying to stand in its way are just being bulldozed right over. Again, all of these things are examples of the mind. I don't know about you, but the devil has been very active in uh, reviewing my life. Uh, casting up before me uh, things that, uh, you know, before conversion, uh, something I may have done at six years old or something like that, or 12 years old. Um, And all to try and get us to be shaken in the faith. Thinking that, whoa, if I if I forgot about confessing, you know, that thing at, at, at the accountable age, at least the one at 12 years old, I don't know about the six year old, but uh, the, the one at 12, uh, well, I was in a converted Christian at the, at the time either. But uh, my point is, is that if these little things are coming up. Do you not see the potential, or or is it just me, but do you not see the potential for Satan to start making people wonder, did I confess all my sins? Am I going to go into the seven last plagues with unconfessed sins? And when Jesus returns, will I be able to stand? No wonder it's described as the anguish of the mind. It's already begun in several other people as well. I get uh, messages uh, in various forms describing similar things. It's almost as if to say, if we're not going through it, uh, begun to go through it, maybe Satan is uh, comfortable with us. Yes, beat back Satan by claiming the blood of Jesus and claiming that Jesus' grace is sufficient for each one of us. We're going to have to hold on to these promises because if if we think this is pretty bad now, wait until uh, we have no allies. When they can actually brainwash the people into thinking that if you do not go along with the mark of the beast that you're worthy of death. Some have even suggested that with uh, the current crisis. So uh, people are already thinking that way, being brainwashed again. No wonder Jesus in the book of Matthew, and you can look this up, when questioned, what is it going to be like in the last days? He says, yeah, there's going to be earthquakes. There's going to be wars and rumors of wars, but don't let your mind become unsettled in these things. These things are going to happen. They're going to come to pass, but the end is not yet. There are There is one particular one that Jesus was more concerned about than anything else and identified it four times. Beware of the deception. Be not deceived. If it were possible... To, it, it, that maybe even the very elect, but they won't, could be deceived. That's how serious the brainwashing is going to happen in these last days. So what we need to do, now that I've enlightened everyone, that the greatest battle right now is right here in our minds, and we got to fortify the mind to be able to resist the devil and his ways, and his attempt to take over our mind, to get us weak in the faith, we need to practice controlling the mind, what we think about. In fact, according to Philippians 4.8, here is the advice. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just and whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. 
He didn't say just do those things. He said, think on these things. If we put our mind on those things, when something comes into to mind, hey, get a load of this temptation. You know, no one's looking. And we immediately turn our thoughts to something pure, something honest. Yes, to Jesus even. Maybe directing it to a favorite verse that we might have memorized and start quoting it. Or quoting scripture in general, just randomly going all over the Bible that we remember. Oh yeah, I remember this verse. I'm just going to say it has nothing to do with uh, what I'm immediately facing, but at least it's scripture. You exercise the mind that way. Those temptations get smaller and smaller and smaller. Because remember, when we dwell on the temptation too long, that's when sin is conceived in the mind and it'll give birth to actions. And that's why it's so important to focus the mind through hymns, memorize some songs, and start singing them. Start humming them. If you don't know the words, hum them. Maybe whistle if you can whistle. All I know is that the battle is on. Satan is winning a lot of souls. And no wonder it says that he goes forth to prepare the nations for the greatest battle of all, Armageddon. Who is going to control the congregation? We get to decide who controls this member of the congregation. Jesus wins overall. Will we, will we be part of the congregation because we exercised our minds properly? I leave you those encouraging words. Fight the good fight of faith. Submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil. And those temptations will go away. Your mind does not have to be always on God. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No. Many of us are employed and we have to do our duty to the fullest extent. There is things around the house that we have responsibilities to do. Take care of those things. We, those that are parents have parenting duties. Your mind is going to be on those things and that's okay. Because those things are, believe it or not, still, for instance, of an honest wage. Put in the best effort as an employee to earn the honest wage. We are at war and it's not going to let up on this side of the second coming. Maybe... Well, it won't let up, I should say, even though we may be sealed, that we have gone through the judgment and been declared, and it's not happening just yet, holy and righteous, and we won't move from that position. Even then, we shall, right up to the second coming, still struggle in our minds. The only thing is, according to Revelation 22, we stay holy and righteous. But we will not know that we are actually holy and righteous until Jesus declares his grace is sufficient for us. Because even the angels hold their breath at the second coming until those words are announced. fight. March on and fight and realize the seriousness. And remember, as you help others to be in right relationship with God, you help yourself. So seek out others to hold Bible studies with. Watch your fellowship with uh, unbelievers their influence is not supposed to be them upon us. We're supposed to have it upon them. Search your life and see what may not be sin, 
but that allows that is allowed in your life that actually undermines your stance, your relationship with God. It may be, friends, it may be what you listen to, it may be what you watch, it may be where you go, what you do, what you read. Just be careful. Let none be lost. And as we guard the mind, our actions shall follow as well. May God be with you. Our Father, we thank you so very much for the awareness that the battle is on. Help each one of us to guard our minds by thy grace, by thy power, the divine power that you are so willing to give to us so that we can walk godly, walk in all your commandments, statutes, and precepts. And I pray that we would be guided each and every day in truth, not for knowledge's sake, but for life's sake. And may your spirit not depart from any one of us and that we may all be gathered on the sea of glass after this battle. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.